Hey, in this episode, we are going to look at how we can measure our rotor thickness and determine whether or not we can just throw in brake pads or if we also need a rotor. We're going to use a micrometer. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm not going to be working on the Cafe Racer this week, I just don't have time to get into that. I need to change the brake pads on my V-Strom, the everyday bike. You know when you buy a new bike and you ride it for maybe 30,000 miles or so and put new brake pads in, you don't have to replace the rotors typically. I mean, you know, depends. But um, you throw pads in there and you keep going, but when you start getting 50,000 miles and you're on your second set of replacement pads, you got to start thinking about not only do the pads wear, but also the rotor wears. And so as that rotor gets thinner, the pads come closer and closer together. And then of course, as the pads wear, the backing of the pad, which is that you know steel metal plate that all the brake material is adhered to, that comes closer together, and all of that coming closer together means that the piston has to come further and further and further out of the master brake cylinder, excuse me. And uh, at some point, you know, the piston can only come so far. Uh, and if that piston pops out past the rubber seal inside the cylinder, the brake cylinder, uh, then phew, there goes your brake pressure, there goes your brakes. So there is a point at which you've got to replace those rotors and in the service manual that spec is there. So for my bike, uh, 2012 uh, V-Strom 1000 Suzuki, uh, the spec is 4.5 millimeters uh, and then uh, that's like the minimum and in inches that is 0.18 inches. So that's 18 hundredths or 180 thousandths. So you can take your cheap caliper measuring tool and get a pretty rough idea and these things will even go to hundredths of an inch like the spec is in the book. But beware of using this because because these things as you bring these apart this is absolutely flat and flush and so all along this edge inside here, it's going to measure the thickest point. But on a brake rotor, there's different thicknesses. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Here's a bad drawing of a brake rotor. So you've got that rotor spinning in between the pads. Pad material would be here. Oops. Sorry, it's an uneven surface underneath there. And then there's like the backing plate to the, the pads themselves. And that rotor is spinning inside of there, but you'll see that the pad rides not all the way to the absolute edge of the rotor. And so what happens as you're using the brakes over time, this gets a little bit, I'm going to exaggerate this, but it wears inward and it gets a little bit of a lip on it. And so if you're measuring, and again, that is greatly exaggerated, but if you're measuring this, all you're gonna be measuring is that outside lip, and you're gonna have a tremendous gap inside there. So what you need is a tool that gets past that lip and goes into the actual area where the pads ride, and that's where you need a micrometer. And so just to prove this out to you, Here's my rear rotor. I'm going to set this caliper inward on the rotor where the brake pad touches and get it snug against the rotor and now I'm going to try to pull it back and it sticks. It has to expand to get past that. There's a lip there. I don't know if you can... It's. I mean this is flexible enough to where if I yank it it'll come off but you don't want to be measuring this outside edge, you want to measure in there. 
And so as you look at a micrometer, this one is in inches. It goes from zero to one inch in thousandths of an inch increments. And uh, so each one of these little tiny tick marks over on this spinny part, there's a technical term for you, uh, is a thousandth of an inch. And then if you spin this out a little ways, you'll see one, two, three, these, one, two, and three, these are tenths of an inch. And so if I want to get to point two zero, I would go in to right here, with this being on zero and this being on two. And you'll notice now, as I spin this closed, making this gap smaller, I will turn the the wheel here with the uh, thousandths markations on it, and I'll go from two to one. Count how many times zero goes by. One, two, notice we're at the halfway mark, three, and now we're dead on one. So in between one and two, this wheel turns four times. That means that this thing is uh, a quarter of a tenth, essentially. So if I go from two down to the next time I'm back at zero, that represents one quarter of the way between those two. That's 1.75. If I go again, I've gone two quarters, which is one half, so I'm at 1.5 or uh, 15 hundredths, 0.15. So uh, here I am on this particular rotor. I am, uh, I know that my spec is 0.18 is the limit, so let me get this thing out to wider than 0.18. I'm going to go all the way to two. Whoops, went a little past it. So there's two. It should, yeah, it's fitting on, so I'm definitely less than 0.2 of an inch. And now as I snug this up, here's, uh, I'll show you a close-up of this, so I'll pull it off. I have to remember where it was. Okay. So here's where it is. I'm at 15... So that's a, what, 150 thousandths? Uh, gosh, I don't, I'm kind of losing my mind here. But essentially, um, we know that 1.75 would be a full revolution of this thing, and I'm not a full revolution away from zero. I'm only uh, to 15, 16, 17. So I'm good, but I'm close. I am greater than... 0.18. This is more like 0.189 maybe ish. But um, getting close. So then you know it's a decision of mine. Uh, do I want to replace this rotor or not? Uh, here's my thought process. So um, we know that my rotor has gotten thinner. That means when I put new pads in they're going to be thicker, which drives you know, the caliper further apart, which drives the piston further into the brake uh, uh, cylinder uh, on that caliper. And so f immediately upon putting new pads in, I'm fine because I've brought that piston further into the cylinder. But as this new set of pads wears now, it too will continue to wear on the rotor and the gap will come narrower and narrower and narrower. And if I go to the absolute limit of pad on this set of pads I'm about to put in, there is a risk that I'll overextend the piston. Uh, and so, you know, the question is how much is it gonna wear between now with brand new pads and when those pads are worn? The service manual and, and the manufacturer, they're thinking of that. They're thinking of the fact that, okay, our minimum spec 
should be something that if a brand new set of pads is worn down to nothing, our piston is still not extended outside of the seal in the cylinder and it hasn't broken, um, you know, the, it hasn't lost pressure. And so I'm going to go with it. The other thing I'm going to know in the back of my mind, and I'll even write it in my journal, is what that thickness was and the mileage and the date. And later on, I can go back to that and think about it and say, okay, well, yeah, I was near service limit and now my pads are getting worn down. So this next set of pads, I may not go all the way to completely worn out. And frankly, I'm not at that point right now either. Um, it's just convenient for me to do it now. And they're getting pretty thin. Um, I hope that makes sense. I want to give the disclaimer that you know what you should do is exactly what your service manual says to do, replace it. And, but in theory, you could be underneath that service spec, put in brand new pads, and you're okay for a while if you don't overextend those pads, if you don't go all the way to those pads uh, where service limit, wear out point, what I don't know, call it whatever you want. Um, I hope that makes sense, but that's a risky move for somebody that isn't really on top of that kind of stuff. Uh, so I don't recommend it, because I can't. How about that? Um, would I do it? Probably. That's going to be it. If you guys like what I'm doing, give me the thumbs up and subscribe. I'm really close to a thousand subscribers right now, so I uh, would love to get across that, that mark. Uh, that's a fun one. And uh, oh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to provide uh, good information that people can use. Um, and I just enjoy making these videos. Um, but I got everyday maintenance on the V-Strom and just general motorcycle maintenance. And then I've got the Cafe Racer project on my 1978 GS 550 if you like to see custom work. Thanks for watching.